In today's video, I am covering Shaolin 50K's April 2022 Commodore 64 Coding Challenge. Shaolin 50K is a popular Commodore Twitch and YouTube streamer, as well as a world-renowned retro gaming developer. He has games published for both the Commodore 64 and Game Boy. One of the ways he tries to get the community involved is by holding these programming challenges. In addition, he usually includes some sort of fun giveaways. This challenge was all about decoding base 64 strings and displaying them properly on the screen with no garbage. If you are unfamiliar with base 64 as I was, base 64 is a binary to text encoding scheme as Wikipedia explains. Base64 is designed to carry data stored in binary formats across channels that only reliably support text content. Base64 is particularly prevalent on the World Wide Web. Upon seeing this, I was really close to just dropping out of the competition. It just seemed so complicated. To explain it in a way you might be able to understand better, in the Base64 scheme there are three hidden text characters that must be decoded or extracted out of any given set of four characters. There were a total of 16 official entries into this competition, including my own, which unfortunately was disqualified. More on that later. I plan to break up this video into the following parts. The results, a brief code review of some of the top entries, and more of a deep dive into why my entry was disqualified, along with some bug fixing, utilizing what I learned from just being in the same room with some of these geniuses. What I enjoy most about these competitions is learning from all of the other entries and believe me, I had a lot to learn on this one. Without further ado, the results. All right, in last place, highlighted red at the bottom of the barrel is my entry at 234 bytes and tw over 22 million MCB, the mega cycle byte counts. What Shaolin does is he, he likes to multiply the number of cycles by the byte count in order to give a mega cycle byte count. And that's how he graded the best to the worst entries. Red, the red bar means that my entry was disqualified. So not only was it the slowest, but it was also disqualified. And you can see it here. What I did was I programmed it for this screen. I didn't take into account that there would be other screens and that was one of the reasons why it was disqualified. When you look at the second screen I have some garbage on the screen right here and also uh, I didn't fill in this whole line because I ended the program a little early. I thought I could save cycles by ending it early based on if it was just the previous screen that I was decoding. And then on the last screen, I have some garbage in a few places on the screen and in various areas, and it didn't draw the whole screen. And so it was disqualified. Next on the list at 15 was Gareth at 121 bytes and 8.7 megacycle bytes. You can see his program here fills in properly, has the question mark right there, and fills in the entire word on the message, and displays properly. Next up is Akmafin at 179 bytes and 7.5 million megacycle bytes. And you'll notice everyone's on the fourth page. It's interesting how everyone's looks different. Every entry looks a little different. Next on the list is Skunk Monkey. Uh, it's also highlighted red, which means it was disqualified. 116 bytes and 6.8 million mega cycles. Oh, he may have made the same mistake as me. Like I coded it for this screen and not any others. Yeah, yeah, it looks like similar similar issue as, as, as mine. All right, next up is Nikomo at 166 bytes and 6.4 million mega cycle bytes. Nicely done. Next up is Error Jury at 149 bytes and 6.2 million megacycle bytes. And it looks like it was also disqualified. Oh, like I'm not sure what happened on, on his entry. His looks accurate for normal text, but then the reverse text had a problem. 
Next up is Sorcerer at 167 bytes and 5.6 million megacycle bytes. Next up is Dr. Mortal Wombat at 152 bytes, 5.5 million megacycles. Next up is Gee Half at 154 bytes and 5.4 million megacycles. Next up is Vos TR at 136 bytes and 5 million megacycles. Next up is Carl Hendrick at 123 bytes and 4.8 million megacycles. And now rounding out the top five, Kim Daniel Arthur at 113 bytes and 4.3 million megacycles. Coming in at fourth place, Jesper Gravgard at 152 bytes and 3.8 million megacycles. In third place, Serato Fig at 142 bytes and 3.6 million megacycles. In second place, Skazlin at 115 bytes, 3.3 million megacycles. And in first place, Gears at 130 bytes and 3.1 million megacycles. Congratulations to all the winners and to all the people basically that had entered this competition. This wasn't an easy one. Very nicely done, especially those top 10 entries. It's very, very um, impressive. My understanding is that the first two or three people that had were offered the prize had either already won the prize or declined to take it and it was passed down the line. So even if you don't place first place, you still have a chance at winning a prize. Some of the entries, entrance programs, the first one that was really interesting was Dr. Mortal Wombat. It was interesting because we're not, I'm not used to seeing uh, these. Um, this was done in C language and it compiled very, very well for him to place, for him to place in the middle of the pack essentially at 152 bytes, 5.5 million megacycles. So I thought that was really interesting. And then let's take a look at the top five here. Let's look at Kim Daniel Arthurs. And let's just look at the assembly language here. Look how well commented it is. It's very nice because by reading through this, it can help other people learn not only how their program works, but basically how the algorithm works in general. So this can be very helpful. And then you'll see some of the in, uh, entries employ tactics such as illegal instruction sets like this LAX. Well, not really illegal, but may not work on, on, on real hardware. But this is super well documented. All right, next let's look at Jesper Gravgard. Again, same same thing, very well documented. It took much more effort to document this than I did on mine. Look at this, even showing you what it's doing. Again, another LAX instruction, that's interesting. And then moving ahead to third place, Serato Fig or Certo, Certo Fig. Now this one I, I like um, also, this is a very, very good um, implementation of this, a solution of this puzzle. And something I found helpful later on is this bit of comments right here and I will I will come back to that next we're gonna look at Skazlin oh wow he even put his cycle his average cycles his number of bytes and the MCV his prediction let's see how close it was to what it 3.3, 3, 
I'm not sure. Maybe oh, this says 114. This says 115. It, it, this is the kind of program I, I like to look at. It looks like something I could figure out if I took enough time. I'm not seeing any illegal instructions or anything. I didn't employ anything illegal on mines either. So very, very nicely done. Very impressive. And now let's take a look at the winning entry by Gear S or Gears. It looks similar in terms of their uh, label names. Love how, how well documented that is, how well commented. And I like just the way it, it it's structured right here. Very, very nicely done. Oh, and he even has a little bit of notes at the bottom. So very, very nice entries here for this competition. Now I want to take a look at my program and see if we can get it uh, working. And I promise I won't spend too much time on it, but let's, let's go into that. All right, before we do that, I wanted to show what my interpretation was of how to solve or decode a base64 string. Using the Wikipedia page, we have the TWFU. We chop the left two most bits and then bring the other six bits down. We then combine those six bits together and then we divide those into their eight bits each in order to come up with the coded solution. Certainly not the best implementation or the best way to do it, but this is how I figured out how to do it. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to look at was why, why it wasn't completing this line down here. And that one was fairly simple. I ended it a little early. And so here's my entire program, by the way. I just do a little setup of my zero page pointers. And then I have a loop here. This whole section right here is where my the almost all the issues with my program was in this area. But I did have another area where it wasn't looping all the way. Which line number is that? Okay, so right here. I just need to make it go a little further. And I thought I could save some cycles. I thought I could save some cycles by ending it early. Yeah, and it works for that first screen, but when you go, don't go to decode the second screen, it doesn't draw it all the way across. And so that was the first mistake. The next mistake was something to do in this area here where, where the garbage was showing up on the screen in a few places. And that has, that's where After I confirmed that it wasn't anything with my carry flags or anything being off, I realized somewhere in my adjust ASCII section, so from here to here, there's some issue. And in order to help me figure out what I was doing wrong, what I decided to do, well, what I was gonna do is put these back to decimal. Instead of a letter A, I was gonna put that to that. Put this to a 48. And then I noticed when I was gonna put this to a 26, that it really should be a 27. But that and alone, just making those changes isn't gonna fix anything, as I'll show you. I still have garbage characters and I still have some issues uh, here, here, and here. So it doesn't, that didn't fix anything. But by looking at some of the entries in this competition, and I'm talking about you, Serato, really helped me. Your, your comment really helped me. This one right here. This is where I realized I wasn't checking. So I was checking. I was doing a simple check between 65 to 90 for the, um, for the are those uppercase letters, lowercase letters. And I was also checking the numbers. But what I wasn't doing, I wasn't checking for 62 and 63 are. If you look at the ASCII, let's just look at ASCII table. So 62, 63 are greater than and a question mark. So 
that's what I had to do in this section. Before what I was doing, I was saying, hey, if it's greater than 65 or equal, go down here and subtract 65. If it's greater than 48, then add, then that's a number, add an add four to it, which, which would adjust it to a num numerical value. And if it's greater than or equal to 27, then, then skip, otherwise then it's just gonna add 25. And so very simple way to, to uh, add in these checks right here. So if I want, if it's a 43, make it a 62. If it's a 47, make it a 63. Just do it here, compare it to a 43. Forty-two. What was it? Forty-two, forty-three, forty-seven. I just figure I would just do a quick and dirty fix because I've already been disqualified. I can make this jump this down here. So if it's 43, make it a 62. And if it's a 47, make it a 63. Oh shoot, hold on. And then I noticed while I was on here, I was like, you know what? I don't need all these STA puzzle comma Ys. I didn't do any optimization. I could remove all of these and put it down to this skip. Save some bytes. Okay. Oops, I have a typo. 43 makes it. 43 makes it a 62 and a 47 makes it a 63. Just like Serato says right here on his little index. Now there is a much better way of doing this that I, I, I found what I think is the best way to implement this. And it could be, it might not be the best, but it's very a very well well implemented way of doing this, shrinks this way down. And it was done by Gareth and I'm gonna show that after this. So now let's run it. Now we have, now it 100% is fixed. <laughs> so that's what I should have did if I had done any more testing. I should have been able to figure that out. I just I didn't think we were coding past that first screen. Now let's look at Gareth, the solution I was just talking about. And what I found on Gareth's, when we get to the same spot where he's he's checking he's checking for these ASCII, he's going to fix these values, and he has a little he has a loop right here, and I was like, wow, that is good, and he's just he's reading it in from a table, so he's so this is his program, and he's doing a test right here. You're testing for this, and then if it's less than this value. He does it in a loop. If it's less than, then he skips it. Otherwise, you add the convert amount. And that's the amount down here. And so what I thought I'd do is just copy that over and I'll show you. Copy it into my program just to show you how that it 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 can it, it can make this much shorter if you implement it with a shorter algorithm. So I'll paste in his code. And I will paste in the little table that he has at the bottom. Just throw it at the bottom. And by the way, my uh, uh, there's a reason why I have this blank line in here, but didn't really need to do that, do it that way. But that's how I implemented it. 
And so let's see, instead of his variable name was that, mine was data source. And then instead of saving it at block four, we save it at puzzle. And let's run that. So you see it does the same exact thing in way fewer bytes. And so that really impressed me. Uh, I want to mention one more thing about Gareth's solution or his uh, fix for this part of the program was that if you notice here, it's doing an ADC, but there's no clear the carry. And I, that had me puzzled. I was like, why isn't he clearing the carry here? And then I realized, oh, he's doing these minus ones, if you notice the minus ones. And that is effectively saving one byte, so he didn't need to put his clear carry in there. And that was something that I noticed on his, his program. Then um, finally, the only thing I wanted to mention was a lot of the solutions, when when they got to the end of their program, like in Gareth's right here, they just do a quick loop to clear the screen, to clear the bottom portion of the screen, because if you don't do it, watch, watch what happens. So if you don't clear the bottom line, you get all these characters down at the bottom. And I must have been in a hurry. When I was working on my implementation, I was gonna do a, a clear loop thing, but it wasn't working for me. So I figured that we had to inject blank lines using uh, base 64. So that's what I did. I said, I'll just inject a blank line and then just print it a couple of times. And I'm the only solution that did it that way, <laughs> which added a lot of bytes to the program. And I had to add pro uh, code into the program to loop through that. So that was another thing that made my, my program so big. But anyway, that was the April 2022 programming competition. I, have, I learned a lot from it this time, and I, I always learn a lot from these competitions. And I will participate in as many of them as I have time to do so. And I appreciate Shaolin 50K and all the participants that put in all the hard work for, to develop all these solutions. I'll place all the source code for all of the entries on my GitHub, including my fixed and non-fixed versions of my code over on github.com forward slash gray defender. Thanks for watching.